Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala most gracious most merciful alhamdulillah we always praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was salatu was salamu ala rasulillahi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in we send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his household his companions may Allah bless them and bless every one of us ameen my brothers and sisters this afternoon we have a beautiful uh, collection or a beautiful uh, panel that inshallah would be addressing this particular topic of parenting the roles of the mothers and fathers and in order to make this easy for everyone I have chosen to speak more on the spiritual side of it I'm only going to be speaking for about five to seven minutes inshallah and I will hand over to my able colleagues I have addressed this topic in the past several times and you may choose to actually see that video on YouTube inshallah at your leisure. But today I want to tell you that my brothers, my sisters, when you get to the age of perhaps maturity or puberty and you begin to develop an interest in the opposite sex, you need to realize that that's where it starts. For you to make a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you must supplicate. Many of us don't realize that at that particular age, when we start looking and when our eyes begin to notice things they had not noticed before, we remove Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the equation. And this is why I say that is the point where you are supposed to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Rabbana hablana min azwajina wa dhurriyatina qurrata a'yunin wa ja'alna lil muttaqina imama O oh, our Rabb, O oh, our Rabb, grant us from our spouses, our offspring, those who will be the coolness of our eyes and make us the leaders of the righteous and not only that dua, you supplicate in any language you want, asking Allah to bless you with the best spouse because that spouse you're, you will get married to will become a parent to your child by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I pause for a moment to pay tribute to those who don't have children even though they may have been trying for many years. It is Allah's choice, Allah's decision, Allah's mercy, Allah's divine wisdom. We surrender to it. We will keep trying knowing that Allah only does what is best for us. If Allah knows this is going to be our ticket to Jannah, so it will be. Don't become depressed at that. Go and look after children. And I've seen so many who look after children who may not be biologically theirs, but they become closer to them than their biological parents at times. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all. So I pray that Allah bless you all with offspring. Say Amin. Amen. Look at these young men who are not even married saying Amin. Amen. MashaAllah. It's good. You must say Amin because it is an inclusive dua. It actually means if you say, Oh Allah, bless me with pious offspring and you are not yet married, it starts off with the good wife or the good husband automatically. So my brothers and sisters, don't forget the dua aspect of it, the supplication. Call out to Allah. And on top of that, make sure you know how you are looking, where you are looking for your spouse. Because many people complain about parenting. But my brother, my sister, you made such a big mistake in your choice of a spouse. And the parents out there, you sometimes make mistakes when you say no to your children. When they want to marry a righteous person. When they want to marry someone who is a good man or a good female. Just because they come from the north or the south or they don't belong to your particular tribe. You say no. By doing that, you have destroyed the cornerstone of positive parenting or successful parenting because there will remain issues between the spouses if you have not resolved your matters as husband and wife how do you expect to show or to lead that particular offspring that Allah blesses you with in a way that is exemplary or that is good when you have not even solved your own matters so this is why I call out to parents 
from this particular platform to make it easy for your children to marry those who are decent, reasonable people. No matter what their race, what their color, what their tribe, etc., etc. That is all besides the point. If someone comes to you with a proposal, their level of deen is okay, their level of akhlaq is okay, it is acceptable to you, then you let your children be married. Do not prohibit. If you do, the same narration says, إِلَّا تَفْعَلُوهُ تَكُنْ فِتْنَةٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَفَسَادٌ عَرِيضٌ If you are not going to do that, there will be great chaos and corruption on earth. And who will have caused it? Unfortunately, the parents themselves. So remember this, it's important. I've started at that point because I believe firmly that the choice of your spouse plays the biggest role in whether or not you are going to manage those children by the will of Allah. Ultimately, it's the help of Allah. Also, those who are married, you know, you might be just looking at me to say, Oh gosh, I've already made these mistakes. Now what, inshallah? Well, we will be hearing how best we can develop, correct ourselves, listen with an open mind, inshallah, and we will be able to benefit. The floor will be open very soon for your interaction as well. I want to continue. With that dua, like I said, we make the right decisions, the right choices. Do not be do not be attracted to a materialistic spouse or someone who has succeeded, is successful solely and only from a materialistic angle or perspective. Because if that's the case, remember, one day they may not have that. Or one day they may betray you as a spouse. Or you may find habits that become so bad that you would have to ignore sometimes i know of many emails i receive unfortunately from this country mostly unfortunately from this country where some of the sisters complain i've got a very good husband but he drinks alcohol and he see it's, it's like nothing is wrong he gambles and he go, and he goes out with any woman he wants but he's a good man in the house he reads his salah i was shocked Wallahi, I couldn't believe it. Is this what is really happening? I hope it's not true. My beloved brothers, let's never let that happen. When Allah blesses you with wealth, Wallahi, Wallahi, it is going to be your ticket either to Jannah or out of Jannah. It's up to you to choose where you want to be. Wallahi, when Allah has blessed you with something, cut out your bad habits, cut out your your wrong ways your sinful behavior cut it out it's never going to help you cut out this arrogance look after your spouse and your children and yourself in the process so my beloved sisters you see when we go and even brothers when we go for that which Allah has told you to watch out regarding and when we fall into the trap for example you only look at beauty and nothing else you know, you have to look at beauty. When people read the hadith, they say, Oh, there are four things, you just look at the deen. No, there are four things, five things, you can look at all of those things. But the, the factor that, that is the final factor would be the deen. It doesn't mean that hey, uh, a woman is married for her beauty or for her wealth or for her family lineage, etc., etc. Or for the deen. So now you marry only for the deen. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I need to see her. I need to like what she looks like. I need to talk to her. I need to be somehow attracted to her. The same applies to her. Some of the cultures sometimes are such that you play no role in who you are going to get married to. The father comes and says, I found a husband for you. And the good daughter, a pretty blossoming you know, child who is so gorgeous. And she comes and sees the husband. Oh my God. Oh, is this the guy? A'udhu Billah. A'udhu Billah. You know, she fell short of saying Minas Shaitan because she was... She, she <laughs> but she says, Audhu Billah, we need to be careful. There has to be a spark. Don't misinterpret the hadith. The hadith speaks about these things because wallahi, it's important to look. You want to be positive parents, you have to have a positive union. Without a positive union, how can you be a positive parent, my beloved brothers and sisters? So, when you want your children to get married, ensure that there is some form of compatibility. There is a little bit of a spark on either side. You know, you cannot turn on a candle without a match. So, there needs to be some form of a little flame in order to get that candle alight. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us deeper understanding. Say, Amin. So we make the correct decisions based on the hadith of Rasulullah 
And guess what? The final point I want to raise as my, I've spoken for 10 minutes actually, I really apologize for that. But the final point I want to raise is, we need to make sure that we become closer and closer to Allah as the days pass. I want the best husband, the best wife, but I don't read Salah. I want a lovely man, but he doesn't want me. You know why? Because he's not looking for a person like me. I want to marry such and such a person. Does he want to marry me? He's not looking for someone with my qualities. Because why? I am far off the mark. Subhanallah. I need to get closer to Allah. I need to ask myself, will such and such a person want a person like me? If the answer is yes, inshallah. And if those people are closer to Allah, it should develop us in a way that we become closer to Allah. May Allah make us closer to Him. So if you want to look after your children, you start off with the spouse. If you want a good spouse and you are not fulfilling salah, you have a problem. If you, if you are not fulfilling the obligations unto Allah, you have a problem. So the point I raise, make lots of dua, work according to the advice of Rasulullah We will be hearing a lot of this today, inshallah. And you better make sure, and I better make sure, that as the days pass, I become closer to Allah, not further away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, gone are the days when... And I'm talking here to parents, inshallah. Gone are the days when perhaps we dilly-dallied a little bit. Now, there are children who look up to us for guidance. If we are not going to be striving towards the guidance, if we are immature ourselves, even though we are 50 and 40 years old, how do you expect those children to be rightly guided? May Allah make us the true role models of our children to begin with. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad.